it's us again, it's Dexter and me, and we're back with yet another Fujifilm slash photography video. So no car content this week, I'm afraid. This uh, video is all about photographic filters, so if you're not interested in that, turn off now, because you're going to be really bored. For a while I didn't think I was going to get this video made this week. I've had um, a number of hospital appointments and the week after next I've got a major checkup uh, in my local hospital so fingers crossed for that that everything goes okay. Uh, so this week I've been running around having uh, blood tests and things like that in readiness for that and uh, I've seen um, a doctor from the chronic pain team <laughs> which should help you with some of the back pain I've been suffering. Um, anyway enough of that, that's boring. Um, filters and the filters that I use with my camera system. Um, well, brief history first. When I started off uh, taking landscape photographs many years ago, um, I invested in uh, some screw in filters that you just well, screw in to the front of your lens. Um, now, I only had one lens when I started off, so that wasn't really a problem. So I had four or five. Uh, different grades of filters that just screwed into that lens. I was having problems with vignetting sometimes, uh, especially when I was stacking filters to get uh, different effects. So I thought I'd move on to a slot-in system and I invested uh, a very small sum of money um, in a Kokin or Kokan or whatever, it's a French company so it's probably got some sort of exotic pronunciation. Uh, coke in uh, filter system um, and that consisted of a ring that screws into the front of your lens and you can get all different sizes of those and then a hole there that slots onto that ring and then the filters in turn slot into the filter holder um, and I was getting great results for those um, but uh, one problem with them was their construction they were made of um, resin uh, or plastic and the filter holder itself was quite flimsy um, so I thought I'd invest in something a little bit more upmarket um, and I looked at systems from Format High Tech and from uh, Nissi or Nicey or whatever they're called and Lee and I went for the Lee ones um, purely really on recommendation from other people so I invested in a wide angle adapter ring for my for my wide angle lens uh, to help stop with any sort of vignetting uh, and the Lee foundation kit which is a 100 millimeter um, filter holder uh, where the lenses the lenses where the filters slot into the front of that holder and you can stack up to uh, three filters uh, or four if you've got a polarizing ring on. Um, I just tend to use mine with uh, two filter slots and the polarizer ring. So that gives me um, like three filters stacked really, uh, which is more than enough. Um, do you need filters at all? Well, no, not really. I mean, um, uh, some of the effects that filters give you, you can replicate in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever. Um, uh, photo editing program you, you're using I would imagine um, but there are some effects that you can't and I would say if you only buy one filter for your camera system get a circular polarizer that's if you're using digital cameras if you're using film you need a different type but um, a circular polarizer uh, now what this uh, filter does is it removes uh, glare and reflections of things like uh, wet rocks, foliage, water and it also helps to saturate colours so you can get um, brighter blues and well, all sorts of colours. Um, so if you're just going to get one filter I would say get one of those. Um, I use a filter made by a company called Hader and it's a 105 millimeter um, diameter uh, filter so it's quite a large um, 
piece of glass or two pieces of glass um, that screw into the end of the, the um, filter holder and then you uh, rotate the polarizer to get the uh, desired effect that you want. Moving on from the circular polarizer filter, the other ones I find uh, essential for, for my line of work are um, neutral density filters. Um, now what these do is stop the amount of light coming into your lens and hitting the sensor or the film, um, enabling you to slow down your exposure times and get nice creamy uh, watery effects if you like that sort of thing. Or you can emphasize cloud movement, things like that. Uh, it basically enables you to take longer exposure shots. Um, I've got three that I use. I've got a three-stop filter, which isn't a Lee one. It's made by a company called Kood. And even though it is a plasticky, resiny filter, uh, it's excellent, it's fine. Uh, it does the job. Um, and I've also got uh, a Lee six-stop filter. I think they call it a little stopper. And a ten-stop big stopper. Um, now these uh, enable you to really slow down your uh, exposure time, sometimes to minutes even. And these Lee filters are, are lovely. Uh, they're glass, they've got a little um, foam gasket on them to stop light uh, leaking in, uh, which is quite important. Um, otherwise you can get uh, sort of ghosting and flaring in your images. Um, but yeah, they can give some really um, nice dreamy effects to your photographs. Now, the next set of filters I use are graduated neutral density filters. And these are ones that are sort of darker at the top of the glass, fading down to clear glass at the bottom. Um, sometimes they've got a hard edge uh, right in the middle. And sometimes they've got a more graduated soft edge. Now, you can replicate the effect of... Um, these filters in Lightroom because all they're doing um, is controlling the exposure in a part of your shot. Uh, so say if you've got a very bright sky which you need to uh, to bring down to balance your exposure you would you'd use one of these. But Lightroom now has uh, a built-in graduated filter. Um, now I tend to still use my grads and I've got a three-stop Lee um, soft edge one and I've got a four-stop high-tech uh, reverse graduated filter. Now what this one does is it places the darker part of the, of the uh, filter at the middle of, of um, your image, or so you can place it on the horizon. Now what this does uh, is enable you to control your exposure more at times like sunset and sunrise when the uh, darker part of the sky is right at the horizon. Um, but again, you can replicate this in, in Lightroom, uh, so you don't really need um, graduated filters. But oh, I like to get things right in camera, leading to uh, less time sat at the computer, really, um, fiddling about with your images. And I find it, especially being a bit of an old school photographer, um, a lot more satisfying doing it that way than relying on software. The next couple of filters I've got, I've hardly used. Um, in fact, one of them I've never used. I haven't used it at all yet, and that is a infrared filter. Uh, I saw a few um, infrared images uh, a few years ago when I was in the hospital, actually, and I thought I'd like to have a go at that. Um, so I bought myself a Hoya uh, screw-in uh, infrared filter, and I haven't used it yet. I, uh, I read up on actually taking and processing infrared images, so I've got all the knowledge in there somewhere, um, but I haven't put it to use yet. I'm hoping to do a bit of this in the summer, because you can get up and about when the sun is really bright and not necessarily the best time for landscape photography in general. Uh, the other filters I've got are star filters. Now what these do is if you're taking pictures of a light source, um, or a star, <laughs> um, they produce little sort of extended bits um, on that star, so it looks like a more pointed star. 
or source of light. Um, and they're quite nice actually, the, uh, the effects you can get with those. Um, but I haven't used them an awful lot, but I've only just got them. Um, haven't used them much uh, to date. Now a lot of people have asked me before, do I need a clear filter on the end of my lens? Uh, my answer is always no, uh, you don't need one. Uh, if you look after your stuff. Um, if you don't look after your stuff and you're a bit ham-fisted and clumsy, then yeah, by all means, um, get a, uh, a clear or skylight, I think they're called, or UV filter, which you can stick on the end of your lens to protect its front element. But what I always suggest is if you are going to use one of those, before you take a picture, take it off. Um, uh, lens manufacturers spend millions on research and development and manufacturing their glass so why would you want to stick a 20 pound piece of um, glass in front of that again uh, other than to protect your lens but i would tend to rely on um, always putting the lens cap on the lens uh, carrying my camera around uh, on a strap uh, leaving the lens hood on uh, and that that's enough to protect it really so you don't need um, a uv filter they are quite cool though, because they make the front element of your lens look absolutely huge. Um, but uh, I don't bother with them personally, and uh, I don't think you really need them. Uh, so there we are. Those are the filters I use with my X-mount lenses. Uh, anyway, as usual, I hope you found this in some way helpful. And we will see you again very soon. Bye for now.